For some time, I've been collecting stories and images of the family. This is great-great-grandpa Horace and great-great-grandma Catherine Tolles. He was born in the 1840s and so was she. What's incredible to me about it is now I have a vision of someone in my family who was alive during slavery. So it's not just a name, but now I'm actually seeing the, the faces, feeling the spirit of two survivors of slavery in, in the United States. They both lived in Kentucky. There's an area not too far outside of Lexington called Unninger Town, named after Sam Unninger, who initially sold the land after slavery to blacks. It became a black village or a black hamlet, as they call them in Lexington. This one is my grandmother's house. My grandmother had an eighth grade education. She had 10 sisters. My grandfather had an eighth grade education. They were tenant farmers. When I first started going to Kentucky, we didn't call her grandma or nana, we called her mama. So every summer we went home to see mama and papa. Wow. And she is the one that named um, me Linda Lou. She was born in 1887 and she passed close to 100 years old. She had 14 children, 11 living. They were all sisters, except for one brother who was a postal worker. And the majority of them, like I think eight of them, became school teachers. Just married is my dad and my mom in 1945, 46. My father was from Edgefield, South Carolina, and my mom was from Lexington, Uninger Town, Kentucky. I love this photograph because the men are so handsome and the women are so beautiful. What's important to me is how they got there. My dad was a dispensing optician, uh, one of the first of color in the state of New Jersey. It was very significant for a black man to own his own business in the early 1950s in Newark. Is this his shop? Yes. Did his shop get destroyed during the riots? We have one of the wonderful Soul Brother stories to tell about how he had the sign Soul Brother in the window and not a window, not a glass, not anything was cracked. This is my mother. Here's my mom voting for Obama. My mother, when she was growing up, in order to go to high school, you had to go to town, which meant going to Lexington. There was no busing. So my mother left her mother's home in sixth grade every week, came home on the weekends, in order to get an education at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School in Lexington. This is you? Yes. I was the editor of the newspaper at East Orange High School, and I went to the superintendent of schools, knocked on his door, and I said, I really want to do a very special final issue. He said, there's a conference coming up, the White House Conference to Fulfill These Rights, which was two years after the signing of the Civil Rights Bill. How would you like to go? So I took my first airplane ride, my first trip by myself solo, met Martin Luther King, met Thurgood Marshall, met the Kennedys. The civil rights leaders were just so delighted to see me in this sea of white reporters as a young person that they were just very, very gracious in their time and having pictures taken. As we share our stories, we see the similarities and it is creating diaspora community because it's uniting.